Hey, what is going on everybody and welcome to a new uh, video, a new breakdown that I'm going to be doing. And this one is a little bit different. Uh, I've been an advocate for Redshift for a very long time and yeah, I find myself now going back to Octane more often. Yeah, for me, uh, you know, using Redshift lately has been very, very painful. So I figured that, you know, working on a personal project, like a passion project and trying to uh, get back into Octane just to like try to stay up to date with it uh, would be a nice thing to do. Uh, and yeah, it worked out really well. And if there's one thing that I would take out from this experience is to always try to stay up to date with uh, the two renderers or at least, you know, a couple of them because you never know you never know when one of them is going to go downhill like uh, unfortunately you know redshift has in the past few months so yeah this uh video that you're going to see here this breakdown is going to be on octane render and cinema 4d and this uh, is going to be a two-part video the first part is going to be more about the modeling and the you know initial uh sections of the of the whole process and then the second part is going to be available on my patreon and yeah i think uh you know without much further ado i hope you enjoy the video and i really hope to see you on my patreon for the second part so yeah enjoy i started as you would with any project gathering reference i had a few bottles at home because i like this beer but i also looked at proto photography references not only from this course banquet bottle, but from other bottles as well, just to have plenty to draw from. It was also important for me to find a sort of a blueprint for the bottle, and I luckily found this one on Behance. Kind of low resolution, but good for my needs. Plus, I only needed one side view, since the bottle shape is pretty simple. I brought my blueprint into the side view in Cinema 4D and started the modeling process. I grabbed a simple cylinder, removed the top cap, and then simply started to get the overall shape together using simple subdivision techniques, turning on and off the subdivision generator and pushing and pulling the shape until it was around the width I needed it. This process probably took me a bit longer than needed because modeling is not my strong suit, but sometimes it can be a relaxing process. After the overall shape was done, I selected everything and made an extrusion to give this bottle the thickness it needed. Here, I just guesstimated it. But one thing I wanted to point out is to save selections of the inner and outer polygons, which come in handy later when working on the liquid. For that, I took a copy of the inner polygons and closed it out so it's watertight. But the selections allowed me to quickly hide the outer polygons and adjust the liquid so it's intersecting the two walls. I am not super theory driven, but I know that this is the way to go. If you want to understand why you need your liquid intersecting versus touching the inner wall, I recommend you to watch this video from Raphael Rao, who makes a much better job at explaining the theory than I do. Lastly, we needed a little bit of a dip on the top of the liquid for that surface tension look, and we can continue moving forward. Oh, and I also forgot to say that I stole the cap from one of the asset browser assets because who has time to model that? UVs is something most people avoid and I understand why. It is a tedious and boring process, but one that's needed. I had this bottle next to me on my desk, so I was able to see all the little glass details it has and I wanted to make sure I had them too, even though they might not even be visible in the final image. So, I went ahead and using the simple Cinema for the UV tools, I created a UV map for the parts I knew required a texture. The top and bottom side of the bottle, and the bottom circular part of the bottle which has some shapes that always add some details to the renders, especially if the bottle is seen from the bottom up angle. The rest of the bottle I just made a selection and put it on a corner of the UV map, just to have it. I brought the UVs to Photoshop and started working on the glass details. I grabbed the course logo from just a Google vector search and the rest I just made by hand, looking at the real bottle next to me and making it the closest I could to the real one. For the bottom details, I went to Illustrator and made a circle guide, positioned the first shape on the top center and then using the rotation tool anchored to the center of the circle, I made a copy. I then used the command Ctrl D to repeat the last action and as you can see, it creates the whole shape for me. Brought that back into Photoshop, and since I knew I had three levels of displacement, I gave each a full red, green, and blue value. This allows me to save the PSD and split the displacements in Octane later, without having to save three different files. And I'm going to show you how that works in a minute. 
Back in Cinema 4D, I checked the textures roughly in the viewport and they are working. It looks like the bottom side of the details were a little bit too big, so I went back to Photoshop and adjusted that. And that's it. This bottle is now ready for some octane materials. I started with the clear glass material and here's where I split the RGB image for the displacement. I couldn't find a displacement blender node like the one in Redshift, so this is what I used. I run the texture through a channel picker node to select the proper channel and then through an octane gradient to control the level of displacement. Less white means less displacement here. Then that goes into a composite texture node where each node is set to the add blending mode. The downside is that for the octane displacement node to read all of this, we need to run it through a baked texture node, which kind of slows things down a bit, especially when using the solo node action. I found that disconnecting the displacement helped a lot with speed, and maybe there's a better way to do this, but this was my solution. This setup allows me to control how much displacement I have from each part of the texture. Besides the texture-based displacement that does not require subdividing the model heavily, like the vertex point displacement in Redshift, there's this other awesome feature in the displacement node in Octane called the filter radius, which basically blurs your displacement at render time, giving you soft transitions. This is great because again, I have control over this in the render and I don't have to bake the blur on the texture. After that, it was a lot of trial and error to try to get the glass to look somewhat accurate. I tried many different approaches, but in the end, this is what worked. A single triplanar texture on the bump map, plus just a tad of overall roughness to give it that cold look in the glass, and also a yellow color in the transmission, just to get it to the color that it needed to be. I knew the condensation would do most of the heavy lifting here, so I moved forward with it. 